This is what Juba looks like by night. One more night. Yeah, we give it one more. This is also what the world's newest capital city sounds like by night. When South Sudan gained its independence, not many of its citizens expected that this kind of nightlife would permeate some parts of its city streets. Indeed, with every new and growing town which attracts traders, business people and a large international community from far and wide, there comes a separate kind of life. Undeniably, numerous towns across South Sudan have also caught on. Businesses uh, come in with so many problems uh, where you could uh, have resources but not use resources for the development of people but use these resources actually for destruction where you, you found a vulnerable group and you, you, you do whatever you want to do with them, give them those resources and um, you, you destroy their, their future in terms of what they were thinking to do and their dreams. There's a lot of hotels in Juba and um, which also uh, offers uh, some jobs and uh, there are also a lot of business, other business and now a lot of bars, you know, which are also offering a lot of opportunity for drinking. These towns in both rural and urban areas have opened their doors to foreigners from across the world. As guests of the country, a large community from the United Nations family and non-governmental organizations work day and night supporting the new nation through various mandates aimed at institutional building, protecting civilians, saving lives, securing peace, including social and economic development. Well, as the United Nations, we have been invited. Um, South Sudan's uh, government said, can you please come and help us in our first years after independence to help protect uh, our population, to help consolidate peace, uh, help us with state building, um, the core functions of the state. Some of these mandates have taken the shape of emergencies and development assistance and have helped in alleviating poverty and immediate suffering while at the same time strengthening national capabilities. With the good, there is sometimes a potential for bad. While contact with the community has helped South Sudan achieve various dividends of peace to start developing as a new nation, this has also led to some incidences of misconduct for which the UN family and NGOs have a zero tolerance. Sexual exploitation and abuse, it's the actions committed by one individual who is in a position of power, of authority, and who takes advantage of that position to subject another person who is in a position of vulnerability to sexual demands, sexual favors. Sexual exploitation and abuse is an abhorrent act, whoever does it, wherever and to whomever. It's a violation of, of rights. You force somebody because that person has no capacity. In October 2003, the Secretary General issued a bulletin aimed at preventing sexual exploitation and abuse by United Nations personnel. If a staff member has broken these basic standards and rules and engaged in this illicit activity of sexual exploitation and abuse, then we investigate and we have strict disciplinary measures against such staff members. This has happened under my watch and, we don't, and I hope we will not have any more of those cases. If so, we will meet them with tough measures. 23-year-old Eva Maria, not her real name, gave birth to a baby out of wedlock after she was involved with a former peacekeeper who gave her money from time to time. So just a little bit of things, that's what she used to give me, like a money, $15, just like that. Yeah, when I get pregnant, and then from there he get scared, he told me that if he went back to his country, he will be back up to now. No contract, no everything. When I gave birth, I don't have money for feeding, I don't have money for shop. My life will become miserable. I myself, if I get money, I used to send for my daughter for school fees for treatment, for everything. 
me, I'm the mother, I'm the father now. I feel very bad for my life, which I have been suffering like that. Maria is one among victims of sexual exploitation and abuse, who either get unwanted pregnancies, contract HIV AIDS, drop out of school, or are victimized by their communities. To guard against repeat cases like Maria's, the United Nations family and NGOs alike have strict rules and regulations for both their military and civilian personnel. These rules are geared at ensuring that the local population is treated with respect, courtesy and dignity and is not discriminated against, harassed or sexually abused. Through various induction courses conducted upon arrival and on a quarterly basis, personnel are prohibited from engaging in sexual relations with anyone under 18 years of age, sexual relations with prostitutes, sexual relations in exchange of money, employment or goods, presence in off-limit locations like clubs which are restricted to UN staff. We are monitoring what we call off-limits places, outfits, bars, discos, places where this type of trafficking is going on and these are off-limits for UN staff. The UN strictly has processes and procedures that handle uh, abuse. Uh, whenever abuse occurs, uh, any kind of abuse occurring must be reported. And when it is reported, they are well laid down processes and procedures. Uh, for sure, as a human being, uh, there are those wrong elements within, whether in police, in uh, South Sudan police or any other police. But definitely there are many things that guide uh, individuals. Whenever you join this, uh, this, uh, this organization or institution, you need to be abided to the laws of the country, the norms, the cultures. To prevent sexual exploitation and abuse, officials from the United Nations family and several non-governmental organizations meet every two months. They also ensure that outreach efforts through information and communications campaigns are conducted. Protections is not about the government alone. It's all about the family. It's all about the community. It's all about the society. It's about public at large. These efforts are not only pursued at round tables, but are also conducted at the Payam and Boma levels, for example, in schools, at universities, in displaced people's camps, and other areas where traders, women, and youth groups are targeted. Through these awareness campaigns, the local population is educated on their rights, duties and responsibilities with the hope that in case these rights are violated, they can break the silence around problems that are often swept under the carpet by bravely stepping forward and reporting any abuse. Emmanuel Lasu, a popular South Sudanese musician, has also taken up a role, which he says is hoped at spreading a message of behavioral change amongst those who will keenly listen to his song. I'm a son of this soil, and we always try our best, especially me. I always try my best to educate, or to educate our people here. So, um, normally, I sing songs that uh, educate people, that encourages people uh, to change someone's behavior. So whenever I hear of anything dealing with the youth, dealing with the teenagers, how we can help them, I feel I need to participate in that. As Emmanuel takes the airwaves, he is convinced that his tune will help break the shame and the silence around acts of sexual exploitation and abuse and that all of those involved in helping prevent it will succeed as service with pride takes the center stage. Please, 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 stop sexual exploitation 
an abuse. It's wrong. When we talk loudly about them, discuss them, and say that this is an abhorrent and unacceptable act, then it is much more difficult for anyone to engage in that activity. It is a collective responsibility to say, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. And if it's not going to happen, then get on board and speak about it. Don't be quiet about it. No matter as good. No, 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 no.